Welcome back to There and Back Again. Thank you uh, for tuning in to all of our uh, two, three, maybe four Dude, listeners. Dude, just believe in something, man. I have faith, well, in Christ alone. But I also believe people want to hear what we have to say, especially you. Yes, Patty boy. exactly. I, you, you know me. Uh, we are back for our second episode of There and Back Again. Uh, I hope you tuned in last week uh, to listen uh, to kind of the primer, uh, get our thoughts on a few small projects, kind of ease you in uh, to the way we're going to handle our little podcast here. Today, uh, it is November 9th. Um, We are going to talk about a very unfortunate event um, that happened this past weekend here in Houston uh, that I know has affected a lot of the people Um, both here, uh, and also, um, across the world Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, the unfortunate, uh, death of eight people, injury of over 300 people at the Astro World concert, a rap concert, uh, by the artist of Travis or by the name of Travis Scott. Pastor Hole, have you heard about this? I have heard about this. I hear about things occasionally. This is, and I, I didn't really know. I remember I actually saw it on TikToks where I saw it first. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have cable at our house. We stream a bunch of stuff. So I was on TikTok one morning and saw this. And I thought it was like, I, I was baffled. So of course I went in, typed it in on Google, looked it up, started reading. And it the first thing that, that hit me with this was just how fragile man is. You take four years ago here in Houston, you have Hurricane Harvey decimates so many all the way from the coast all the way up to the Woodlands, Conroe area, people without homes, people, we had members of our church with destroyed homes, but you saw people out on the streets helping each other, being patient with each other, and then you had the Strohs win the World Series, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just a year like, this is a city with heart. This is a city where people care about each other. That was the image. Not even, I mean, basically four years later, Yep. you have the, the complete desolation opposite. and the fall of yeah. the uh, to it, give, just, yeah. To give some background uh, to our audience, if you, if you don't know, uh, this past weekend there was a festival that's occurred uh, the past few years by a local Houston artist, uh, one of probably the biggest artists that has made it out of uh, Houston by the name of Travis Scott. Um, He is a hip hop artist, rapper, um, and Astroworld, uh, named after the former amazing Astroworld, uh, normally has about 50 to 75,000 people uh, in the audience. Um, This year, it's uh, rumored that there was over 100,000 both in literal ticket sales and then people that um, were uh, encouraged to jump the gate uh, by Travis Scott on Twitter Mm -hmm. uh, and a now deleted tweet. Yep. Uh, Ultimately, what happened uh, is the show, uh, to make it short, the show got out of hand um, and something known as crowd crush where a crowd, a mass crowd pushes forward, uh, ultimately eight people's lives or lost their lives. And over 300 injured, uh, one 10-year-old is uh, still in ICU as we're recording this. Um, it's just a very sad, uh, very sad thing. And watching the news here, um, watching uh, TikTok even, uh, yeah. you know when something takes over TikTok, it must be... Yeah, um, well, on your For You page, crazy. it's like every fourth or fifth clip, little video. The church, I mean, we, we could easily, everyone could dive in and just be one more voice in this situation. Everybody has an opinion, either positive, negative, whatever it is. And it's usually whoever's the loudest, whoever has the best little sound bite, they, they get. But the church is called to be many, I mean, we're the bride of Christ, but we have two things we kind of are that can help sum it up. One is we're a beacon of truth. Jesus Christ says, right, John 14, 6, I'm the way and the truth. So the church speaks the truth in season and out of season. Not just the truth of the gospel, but truth in and of itself. All the truth that comes from Christ. Truth of life, ethics, everything, we speak the truth. 
But also, we are also a lighthouse of hope. We are that beacon of hope. We warn where something is wicked, and we comfort with what the hope we have in Christ is. So that's really what we're called to do in this time with this situation with Travis Scott, because it, it is, I mean, we, we have our, like, especially I as a pastor, I have my own personal, you know, this atrocity I just talked about. You have this good thing and then boom, not me denying the depravity of man. Like, oh, I'm shocked, man, it could be this way. I'm not shocked. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think it also, it speak like if you watch the news stories or you read the first town accounts, um, you can watch the footage of uh, ambulance golf cart kind of driving through, and yeah, and there's literally people <clears throat> dancing on top of the ambulance as this ambulance yeah. is trying to get through the crowd. And that's not even speaking about Travis Scott himself. No, that's people in the crowd, right? Um, and there's people dancing on the ambulance, and then the person who came, who was dancing on the ambulance, came out and was bragging about it. And yeah, like if you don't like the way we rage at a Travis Scott concert, that's your fault. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's the problem is only when you confess the depravity of man, original sin. I mean, that's the thing is, like we talked about last week, you can't just go into some place and just talk about original sin. You point to look at what's going on here. Now, if you bring up abortion, that's automatically going to shut you down. No one's going to listen. If you mm-hmm. walk in and say, oh, abortion, right. yeah, of course it does. Millions of babies, yep. that shows it. Um, the Holocaust, yeah, that shows it. Or uh, things like that. But you look at this situation, eight lives... Those are eight lives that may not to you and I change our day-to-day living, but it's changed someone's mm-hmm. drastically. That's a son or a daughter, a husband, wife, mom, dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. That has changed now. That that person has literally had their arm chopped off with that person being taken from them by someone that doesn't really care, doesn't value life. We value life because Christ took life, all life, in the incarnation. He claimed all life as his own. Therefore, we treat every life as valuable. Every single life matters because of Christ. And when you see someone just completely neglecting it, that's that's just demonic in nature. Right. So for the audience, I'm sure when our audience of tens of thousands of followers eventually stumble upon this deep cut yeah. episode, yeah. Um, and they're listening to this and they're going back, is it possible... Uh, for us, and this is kind of one of the main focuses, is it possible for us to um, absorb the music of Travis Scott and listen to the tra- music of Travis Scott um, t- and t- understand that he committed these types of things? It's very, di- I don't know, for me it's... Or not committed, yeah, not yeah. to shed blame on him, but was part... Well, I he mean, could have done like the examples people are giving right now, like Dave right. Grohl stopped a fight, very easily kicked that guy out of his concert... And you can say, well, that, these are grand shows. No, this is Foo Fighters. They're, they, mm-hmm. they're, amp, they're uh, arenas, too. Yep. They're not little things. They've so, played shows with hundreds of thousands yeah, of people. Tons. Yeah, tons. Uh, and, and that reality is you can stop it. Your, your voice over that microphone is what everyone's paying attention to the entire time. Your voice can stop it, too. Mm-hmm. It can create something and stop something. And his didn't. Well, I think that goes from yeah. not to delve too much into it from... Listening to hip hop and yeah, being relatively in the culture as much as I can be. I mean, I favorite yeah. type of music. Um, I think there there's a large portion of it that is like his entire thing is rage, and yeah. it's an outlet, right? Yeah, and it's a freedom of expression. Yeah, um, his fan base is largely between the ages of thirteen, which we see people as young as ten at his concert. Yeah, um, and that wasn't a cheap ticket. No. No. Um, we see um, people as young as 13, 14, all the way up into their mid-20s yeah. um, coming out of these Generation Z or um, yeah. old millennial um, families. Yeah. Um, that And that's, that's a whole nother topic, but that don't have a way to express emotion or don't have a way to express yeah. their feelings. And if you watch videos of his concerts, there's a documentary online about him that's... Um, fascinating i believe it's on netflix um he encourages his crowd to rage Mm -hmm. and that's that's the big thing and i think for him it's partially harmless Mm -hmm. yeah i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt i think it's partially harmless and he knows that's a way for his crowd to truly let go and experience raw emotion yeah um but at the same time i've been to a lot 
of very heavy metal concerts um, yeah. where you someone gets knocked down, you pick them back up. Yeah. If a woman falls on the ground, um, there is going to be a crowd of people gathering around her, not Make because sure they're smothering her, but because they're protecting yeah. her. Yeah. Um, and I've seen that at all the heavy metal shows. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what separates... Um, those experiences that I've had personally versus, and there's dozens yeah. to hundreds of. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It's like, um, remember the, the Sandler movie, anger management, mm -hmm. you know, you have Jack Nichols, Nicholson. Yeah. Yep. Walks in and he's looking at his CDs and what, remember what band he took? Took the Carpenters. Right, yep. And, and and he's like, oh, this is rage music. Right, yeah. Remember, he, and it's like, it's the Carpenters. You know, I'm on top of the world yep. looking. It's like, this isn't rage the music. The most innocent Closer music to you, ever, right? They long to be. It's what, it's what Chris Farley sang in Tommy Boy, right? Mm -hmm. This is brought him in spade tears. So tears, and then he says, no, get these out because it creates animosity and rage and all these things. So I think a part of it, like you mentioned, Cam, and I'm not saying do we endorse, but the thing is, what do you do? Like, let's say I'm sitting in the parking lot and my son's walking by. So I have a 14-year-old son, you know, and he's listening to this stuff, mm -hmm. you know. It, it becomes, I think, one thing is talking to him. Why do you want to listen to it? What's, what are you getting out of listening right. to it? Um, and having that dialogue. That's the key thing. We have to discuss these things. Mm -hmm. You can easily sit there and say, well, we're not going to talk about this. It's out of here. Goodbye. Some things are, are just so demonic. You need to just say no. That's like take like a Ouija board or something. No, mm -hmm. we're not going to have. There's that. no discussion around something so, like that. Okay, so then where does trap? Where does his music fit into that? Because mm -hmm. music can have an influence on you. It can inspire. You. It can even mold you. You listen to beach music when you're at the beach. You know certain yep. music, but then you have some people they can listen to something like death metal and be nice as pie. That's how they get their rage out. They go listen to it in the car. They're good to go now. Yep. So I guess that then becomes what what's causing the rage, what's in there, mm -hmm. and it's usually something that's going on in their life. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's yeah. I, I think there's just so much angst yeah. in that target audience and 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 the culture that surrounds us that those things are both accepted to yeah. to rage like that. It is accepted. Yeah. Um, and then unfortunately, there's consequences. There's real world consequences to those things. Eight people died. That's yeah, the exactly. consequence that happened. Well, and even even take. I think this is a big thing for that age for that age group too. Not trying to be hip and understanding cool, but you take someone from like twelve to sixteen during twenty twenty, <laughs> that massively impacted you. Mm -hmm. If you're younger than that, it does a little bit, but that age is an age where you're you're coming of age. You're figuring out who you are. Well, I mean, and, and then you have this separation exactly. from everybody. And most of our hopeful audience, yeah, didn't live through nine eleven. Oh, yeah, right. I was in sixth grade during I was a senior in high school, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and that fundamentally shaped who we are now right, and right. our values, et cetera. Um, and I think COVID-19 is going to be this, the generation yeah. Z's. And that's not, and it's interesting too, is like 9-11 for the most part was a American phenomenon. I'm sure there are yeah. ripples across the world. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it shaped American ideals. I think COVID-19 is going to shape worldwide ideals. Oh, yeah. And, and that's... And this is one thing. Did COVID-19 and what happened during it give us a better understanding of the value of life or depreciate it? Right. Not to sit here and discuss about COVID, but it is part of what we do. So did it depreciate if you're not actually physically with people all the time and then you are all of a sudden in this setting you're still in the me first mentality yeah, you're desensitized to the emotion the feeling yeah. of your neighbor and that's the hard part here i think it comes down to like and this goes back to your original question should we or should we not and we don't want this to become the show this is what you can't listen to mm -hmm. this is what you can't not that but it's more uh, what's leading to it how did his music become popular what is it what is it answering in our society right that should be Jesus answering it. Yeah, Christ okay. answered his thing, but this is answering it instead. You know, it's, it's how, how can Christ answer this? And this is the thing. Right now, you kind of have two people on each side with Travis Scott. He's either a demon, and you even see that on TikTok, demonic videos, oh, he's mm -hmm. a gateway to hell. Or you have people, hey, this is, this, this is, he's a great, 
yeah. artists and things like that, instead of taking how do we take this as Lutherans, yet again getting that there and back again, Sunday to Sunday, and we have that eighth commandment, that we put the best construction on people. Is the blood on his hands and on everyone else's hands that had a part in the death of these eight people? Yes. What is the best construction? The only way for that blood to be removed is in the blood of Christ, covering them in the righteousness of Christ. It's not comparing them to Dave Gruel or to anyone else. Yep. Or, okay, let's go and burn all of his CDs now. Because that ultimately isn't canceling him will not solve anything. The only thing that cancels the depravity is Christ himself. The only thing that cancels the depravity of man is the absolution you receive in the blood of Jesus. And that's what this conversation can get to. Mm-hmm. Even listening to his, I mean, listening to his music, what, what is he saying in it? What is he trying to express in it? And, and what is that showing you about the human condition? And what is the answer to all human condition is Christ himself. Because he is the truth. Because what, what, what did Jesus say in John 8? The devil is the murderer. He's, a, he's been a murderer from the beginning. Mm-hmm murdered the original man and woman by having them believe his lie and eat the fruit. And that's the reality of what happens still. If we enter into this discussion and choose a side in it, then we're just like the world. Same with COVID-19. I'm either pro or con with, no, we speak as Christ gives us to speak. And it may be, and and you know what happens with that? And this is the hard part. You're going to anger people on both sides then. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people who want you to condemn the guy outright it's going to be people that want you to justify everything you did. Yep. And you're not going to speak either of them. You're going to speak as Christ gives you to. And that's just going to throw a yep. huge monkey wrench in there. Walking, walking down the straight line and not veering to either side will infuriate both. Luther called it, when you walk with the word of law and gospel, it's like a drunken man on a horse. <laughs> you know, it's so easy to fall off to one side or the other. But staying on there is extremely difficult. And that's what we're called to do. So in this, because I mean... You can start the debate even, what do you listen to? If you listen to him, what's the difference between listening to him and listening to like ACDC or listening to, right. you know, all these bands that your pastor likes to listen to? Is your pastor like the Grateful Dead? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, there are a bunch of good Christian boys in that band. Right. I mean, come on, what, you know, do you only listen to KSBJ like the Christian radio station? Do you only sing Lutheran hymns in your mm-hmm. car? As long as they're not Timothy Dudley Smith, I'll listen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Only care hard for me, 24-7. The reality is it's... But no Olivia Rodrigo, right? No Olivia Rodrigo, then you're fine. But even then, it's like, even if you're not listening to it, even if you are not a fan of Travis Scott, you may have friends that are. Mm -hmm. It's around you, it's here. And you're going to be sitting there and called upon to speak the truth in love. But the only way you can speak the truth in love is knowing what you're talking about. Right. If it's pure emotional response, how do you feel about this? Well, it's a travesty. Of course, it's eight people died. There must be an answer to that. Mm-hmm. Who answers to that? Are they going to put all those people on trial? Or is it really not, right? right. I mean, has anyone... I didn't see if anyone's well, I know, been arrested. I know there's been... There's already lawsuits that are in, in the yeah. works. Yeah, And I, mean, I know he was named um, Live Nation, uh, which owns... The majority of ticket sales and music yeah. venues across the country was named, yeah, uh, and as well as the security com- company. And I want to say Houston PD as well, just yeah. based on how how yeah. they handled it. But I mean, but no one's been tried for murder. No, and that's the thing yeah. here too is it's just it's it overall shows how all mankind has fallen in Adam's fall, and that's why we love that hymn. Uh, it infects us all. Mm-hmm. Everyone's infected by the by the depravity. It's not like one person's better than another. So we're called to condemn all that all may be saved in Christ, including Travis Scott. So I think that's the key thing to get from it. How can Travis Scott and everybody involved be redeemed? Well, it's the same way you're redeemed, only in the blood of Christ. And thank God for that. Praise be to God for that. Thank God. But this is a serious thing, too. And it, I mean, you and I have been talking, how long have we been talking about this? We're on about 17 minutes. So, I mean, it's longer than the first time. But you and I are pretty much seeing a lot of stuff eye to eye on this, mm-hmm. if not everything eye to eye. Oh, just wait till we talk about Christmas music. Yeah, wait, Christmas music would be a much bigger debate. But imagine if you and I are on complete different sides of this. Mm-hmm. This would not be a 17 minute nice little conversation. Oh, yeah. No, there would be hurt feelings. And, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm speaking as someone who's not necessarily a fan of his music. Um, but I, I have friends that are, and I know people that are. And yeah. being in 
the Houston music scene, I'm familiar with him. Yeah. Um, so, and I know this affects a lot of people and it's, it's just, it's very sad. I, very sad. I compare it almost to, um, like in the nineties with Columbine high school, when he had the shootings, they went into these, but what happened if for our younger audiences that weren't alive yeah. during that time, there was the shooting at a school in Colorado, Columbine high school. One of the first. One of the, and it was yeah. really bad. There was a documentary on it, uh, bowling for Columbine. Mm-hmm. Um, but these, these two guys went in with trench coats and shot up a bunch of their classmates really bad. But I remember when they went to their houses, they found Marilyn Manson CDs everywhere. Yep. And I remember it was a big discussion in the church. Should anyone be allowed to listen yep. or do anything with Marilyn? So this isn't anything new for the church either. Right. This has always been this way. How do you live in a world where this stuff exists? Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing. What, what is their worldview? Like, if Travis Scott came out and said, I am a devil worshiper, you know, that would be like, yeah, you're not going to listen to this stuff. Yep. This is very simple. Now, what does he, tr- and if he doesn't, though, and he's trying to express something he's feeling, well, what, what's going on there? What's the deeper thing there? So this also forces you to actually pay attention to what you're singing, what you're listening to in the yep. car. You and know? maybe giving a little, more, a little more attention to those lyrics yeah. um, that might have led to these types of situations. Yeah. Uh, we didn't touch on it earlier now that we're, we're nearing the end of the episode, but these things, while certainly people haven't died, people have been paralyzed um, and things like that at his con- or his concerts before. Yeah. So this is a, almost an unfortunate kind of progression of the issue Yeah. Um, that finally came to a head. Well, and then the key thing is, is what does Paul call us to do in 1 Thessalonians 5.17? It says, pray unceasingly. So what's the greatest thing you do? You may not know those families. You may not know those yeah. people. But you can pray for those families and those people. And pray for Travis Scott, too. We don't know what... I don't know what he's going through right now. Oh, I can only imagine. I, I don't know what he yeah. is. I mean, the immense... I know the guilt I feel over small things I do that don't really affect that many people. Yep. And I so, mean, and I, I don't think it's... Well. Yeah, I don't think it's... I think there's a lot of... Um, well, he's a sociopath. He feels no guilt. There, that's very unfortunate that we would even jump to that. There's no... Well, that's breaking the Eighth Commandment. Exactly, anyways. yeah. There's well, no telling what he's feeling. Yeah. Um, and I know I've seen a lot of stuff, well, everything he said is being ran through a lawyer, and at a certain point you would expect that, but yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean that the grief he is feeling isn't real. The best construction is treat him as you yourself would desire to be treated right In the now. same, yeah. Same that is the reality. Situation. That is the reality. So, I mean... Tough topic, but the thing is, as a Christian, you're free to be able to have the hard conversations knowing you're a forgiven child of God. Yep. And that's how you have them. It's fun times. Yep. Yeah, next time, let's talk about something. We'll talk about bit. something light next time. We'll talk about, I mean, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna, If we talk about Christmas music, I might. we might get yelly. We, we, may, we may have to separate the chairs a little bit. My wife may have to come in and mediate, a little mediation or something. We have bombs in here. Make them make work for being present. I like you that. Know? I like that. Make them come this in and officiate, you know? All right, all right guys. Like go it. to your corners. I like it. You, we know you like Mariah Carey, all right? <laughs> Calm down. Um, you like the buble. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, thank you for listening uh, to this episode of There and Back Again. Uh, this is There and Back Again on the Higher Things Podcast Network. Uh, we are your hosts, Patrick Sturdivant and Pastor Chris Hole. Uh, We hope you have a good week, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Bye-bye.